So you remember the exercise we did with the chessboard, right? The first and the second half of the chessboard, where the second half of the chessboard is the crazy one, where it, like everything gets like huge. What we're doing now is we reverse engineer the chessboard. So we look at the whole chessboard, the Mount Everest full of rice, and then we'll break it down to the first half of it to make it tangible. And then we get you to that one grain of rice you can use today. So we're up to the second part of the worksheet and there's a place to jot your notes as you do this exercise. So the exercise we're gonna do with you now is we're plotting out a future. And when we say future, we really mean like 20 years from now. We figure out a supporting exponential trend. So we figure out which exponential technology are we actually using. So we break this down to about the 10 year curve. And here's the interesting thing, these curves move exponentially. So your 10 year point, the middle point, is actually very close to the point where we are today. And then our last step is we figure out what can be built today, which prototype can be built today with today's technology, which is an approximation of our 10 year vision. Figure out what your 20 year vision is. What is the thing which is outrageous today, leveraging technology you want to build? Let me give you an example. Remember we talked about Nextleaf. So Nextleaf builds sensors for fridges. Well, in the future, 20 years from now, what is a vision? What could be a thing they could build in 20 years? Well, they can have a sensor which costs you pennies, which not just measures temperature, but also measures the quality of the vaccine. It gives you other information about the, um, the vaccine itself. It probably identifies the vaccine so that you know which vaccine it is. And all these sensors are built into a fridge and cost you less than a dollar. That sounds like a pretty crazy, weird 20 year vision. So step two then is now you need to find the, what we call the favorable exponential. So all this can only happen if there's an exponential trend which you can use. In Nextleaf's example, this is the trends we've seen in computing, Moore's law. Computers getting better and sensors getting cheaper and more powerful but you need to find this underlying exponential trend. The 10 year point is where technology is relatively similar to what it is today, because remember this exponential trend, it kind of gets really steep in the second half of the chessboard. So we are now going to the first half of the chessboard. For next leaf in 10 years, probably a dollar sensor, fully connected, GPS enabled, um, sending the data to the cloud, measuring temperature alone. So just temperature, but for a dollar and fully cloud enabled. And now comes our last step. Now we know that this is possible. We're now backing up and we're looking at what can we build literally today. And today is you look at the technology available today, which is a smartphone, a bunch of sensors you can build yourself an otter box to put it into a, a casing. So you put, throw all this stuff together and write a little bit of software and for about $200, you have a working prototype. The thing you do today is super important because it will A, allow you to figure out how this technology actually works. So there's a lot of learning for you internally. Secondly, it will teach you how people interact with your technology. So simple example, in the Nextleaf um, case, you build this thing, it's a smartphone, it's connected, it's bolted to a fridge. Like, does this actually work? Do people like consume the information? Do you need to send them information using an SMS to the nurse in the field? Or is there probably a big red flashing light on it? If you don't build the prototype and you're not trying this out, you will not know. So figure out how can you build with the least amount of resources in the shortest amount of time the biggest form of approximation of what the thing should be in the future. In the year 2000, Elon Musk had a 30 year vision, which was every car on the road will be electrified, which was crazy. At the time, there were only uh, golf carts which were electrified. So you back off from that and you put out your 15 year vision and your 15 year vision in this case would be one car manufacturer produces one mass manufactured car which is electrified. Now comes the plan. How do you do this? How do you build the prototype? Well, the prototype is 
you buy a sports car, you rip out the engine and the drivetrain and put an electric drivetrain in it, and you sell it to people who've got too much money. That allows you to understand how to build an electric car. Then you build a luxury high-end car, which allows you to learn how to build a car from the ground up. And again, you sell it to people who've got too much money. So you're actually like making some money and you learn. And then you build your first mass manufactured car. And of course, that's the story of Tesla. That is all there is to it. If you've done this right, you've written down the end point, the halfway point, and the prototype we can start building tomorrow. You literally have learned how to invent the future. And not just invent it, but also make it happen. So what we learned is create a 20 year vision, back off to the halfway point, the 10 year point, and then figure out how do you create this today. This feels very often just insurmountable, like climbing Mount Everest, you know, it's crazy. It's like, how do you create something which is 20 years out and um, solves the world's biggest problems? And I can guarantee you, I guarantee you that you can create the future by just getting started working on it. And again, all it takes is start building that prototype for your vision.